Coming to personal income tax rates, I have two announcements to make for those opting for the new tax regime. First, the standard deduction for salaried employees is proposed to be increased from 50,000 to 75,000 rupees. Similarly, deduction on family pension for pensioners is proposed to be enhanced from 15,000 to 25,000 rupees. This will provide relief to about 4 crore salaried individuals and pensioners. In the new tax regime, the tax rate structure is proposed to be revised as follows. 0 to 3 lakh rupees, nil. 3 to 7 lakh rupees, 5%. 7 to 10 lakh rupees, 10%. 10 to 12 lakh rupees, 15%. 12 to 15 lakh rupees, 20%. And above 15 lakh rupees, 30%. As a result of these changes, a salaried employee in the new tax regime stands to save up to 17,500 rupees in income tax. Simplification for charities and tedious. Two tax exemption regimes. The two tax exemption regimes for charities are proposed to be merged into one. The 5% tedious rate on many payments is being merged into the 2% tedious rate and the 20% tedious rate on repurchase of units by mutual funds or UTI is being withdrawn. Tedious rate on e-commerce operators is proposed to be reduced from 1 to 0.1%. Moreover, credit of TCS is proposed to be given in the TDS to be deducted on salary. Further, I propose to decriminalize delay for payment of TDS up to the due date of filing statement for the same. I also plan to provide a standard operating procedure for tedious defaults and simplify and rationalize the compounding guidelines for such defaults. Simplification of reassessment. I propose to thoroughly simplify the provisions for reopening and reassessment. An assessment here and after can be reopened beyond three years from the end of the assessment year only if the escaped income is 50 lakh rupees or more up to a maximum period of five years from the end of the assessment year. Even in search cases, a time limit of six years before the year of the search as against the existing time limit of 10 years is being proposed. This will reduce tax uncertainty and disputes. Simplification and rationalization of capital gains. Capital gains taxation is also proposed to be hugely simplified. Short-term gains on certain financial assets shall henceforth attract a tax rate of 20%, while that on all other financial assets and all non-financial assets shall continue to attract the applicable tax rate. Long-term gains on all financial and non-financial assets, on the other hand, will attract a tax rate of 12.5%. For the benefit of the lower and the middle income classes, I propose, the, I propose to increase the limit of exemption of capital gains on certain financial assets to 1.25 lakh rupees per year. Listed financial assets held for more than a year 
will be classified as long-term, while unlisted financial assets and all non-financial assets will have to be held for at least two years to be classified as long-term. Unlisted bonds and debentures, debt mutual funds, and market-linked debentures, irrespective of holding period, however, will attract tax on capital gains at applicable rates. Deepening the tax base. I have a couple of proposals for deepening the tax base. First, security transaction tax on futures and options of securities is proposed to be increased to 0.02% and 0.1% respectively. Second, for reasons of equity, I propose to tax income received on buyback of shares in the hands of recipients. To improve social security benefits, deduction of expenditure by employers towards NPS is proposed to be increased from 10 to 14 percent of the employee's salary. Similarly, deduction of this expenditure up to 14 percent of salary from the income of employees in private sector, public sector banks, and undertakings opting for the new tax regime is proposed to be provided. Indian professionals working in multinationals get ESOPs and invest in social security schemes and other movable assets abroad. Non-reporting of such small foreign assets has penal consequences under the Black Money Act. Such non-reporting of movable assets up to 20 lakh rupees is proposed to be depenalized. Other major proposals in the Finance Bill relate to withdrawal of equalization levy of 2%, expansion of tax benefits to certain funds and entities in IFSCs, and immunity from penalty and prosecution to Benamidar on full and true disclosure so as to improve conviction under the Benami transaction Prohibition Act 1988.